Hello, so what are dictionaries, why are they important, and how can you use them to benefit you as a developer? Well, here's a breakdown of today's tutorial with the goal of covering everything you should know about using dictionaries in Godot. Now, I've done my best to fill every second of this video with information, so subscribe to help out other aspiring game developers, and let's just jump right into it. A dictionary in its simplest terms is a way to store values in a very structured and organized way. In a dictionary, we store values then associate each value with a key name. A value to key name pair is called an element of the dictionary. So in this example, there are three elements in our player stats dictionary. Now note that these values can pretty much be anything from an integer, string, boolean, array, texture, or even another dictionary. A dictionary stored within another dictionary is called a nested dictionary, but we'll get to that later. Throughout the code to access these values, we can say our dictionary name and within brackets, the key name of the value we need to access. Now, why is this useful? Well, if we compare this color dictionary to a color array storing the same information, we can see that when accessing the values in an array, we must know the specific location, while in a dictionary, we just need the key name. Now, in this exact situation, we'd be better off to use a specific type of dictionary called an enum, but we'll go over that later. For now, just know that a dictionary allows you to store values and associate those values with a key name. This becomes very useful for code readability and organization, especially in more complex projects. Now, it's important to know how to add and remove elements from a dictionary. So to add new elements, simply just assign a value to a key name which isn't in the dictionary. That will then associate that key name with that value as a new element within the dictionary. And to remove existing elements, just pass the key name of the element you wish to remove through the erase function. You can easily check if a dictionary contains a specific key name or not by using the has method. And if you need to check for more than one specific key name, then use the has all method. When using bracket notation to get a value using a key name, if the key name is not present within the dictionary, then it'll return null. The get method, similar to bracket notation, returns the value associated with the key name, and if it's not present within the dictionary, it'll return null. However, with the get method, we can pass through a second argument of any value, and if the key name is not present within the dictionary, it'll return that value instead of null. Now, this could be useful in an inventory example, when if you wish to get an item from the inventory and that key name is not available, then you want to say, okay, well, we have zero of that item instead of saying we have null of that item. Oh, and also the size method will return an integer value of the number of elements within the dictionary. The keys method will return an array of all the key names and the values method will return an array of all the values. These are the most common methods, but of course there are many more which will come in handy in different situations, so be sure to look through them in the Godot docs, which I'll leave a link to below. But now that we've been familiarized a bit with dictionaries, for us to get a real understanding of them, let's go through a few examples of instances where they can and should be used. Okay, so a very common use of dictionaries is when creating inventory and crafting systems. In this project here, we have nothing more than a few buttons which send a signal when pressed to our testbuttons.gd script here. So on our player inventory node, we can attach a script. Firstly, let's define a dictionary for our inventory. Our dictionary will store items and their amounts. These will be the items which are currently within our player's inventory. For example, if our player is storing one piece of wood, our dictionary would look like this, but for this example, we can start with an empty player inventory. To update or add items to our inventory, we can create a simple update items function that calls for an item and amount. If that key name exists within our dictionary, then we can simply update the amount of that item in the dictionary. Although if that item key name does not exist within the inventory, we must add that item and set an amount value for it. And if an item's new amount value is zero, then we need to remove that item from the inventory as we don't need to store an item that we don't have any of. If we make this player inventory script in autoload, we can access it from anywhere within our project, allowing us to update our player inventory during different events like an enemy dying or a tree falling. For this example, we will have to do it through our test buttons, but the idea is just the same. So if we call our update item function and pass through an item and an amount of that item when our test buttons are pressed, and real quickly create a way to display our inventory data on screen with a simple rich text label, then when we run our project, we can see that our player inventory displays current values of items along with the ability to collect new items. Now, this may seem really simple, and that's because it is. But how can we add on to this? For example, let's implement a little crafting system which can hopefully help us better understand how to access and use dictionaries in Godot. For a crafting system, we must have crafting recipes. So let's create a crafting recipe script which within we will define and store all of our game's crafting recipes. This will of course be done through the use of dictionaries. 
So firstly, let's define our campfire recipe within a campfire recipe dictionary. Within this dictionary, we will store our ingredients as an element by nesting a small dictionary defining those ingredient items and the amount we will need. In this case, three wood and five rocks. We will also store our products as another element by again nesting a small dictionary containing our product and its amount. In this case, just one campfire. Hopefully you can start to see how this would make it easy to access and store all this information in a very structured way, as we can easily access all of our ingredients and products and their associated amounts all within a specific recipe. But if not, we will see this better in a moment when we start actually implementing crafting logic. Let's create a main crafting dictionary which will store all of our crafting recipes. We can assign those recipes to a simple easy to remember key name within a ready function. Let's make this script an autoload so we can access our recipes from our player inventory script. To implement crafting logic, let's create a function named craft item with a key name parameter. First, we need to find the recipe. So using the key name we passed through as an argument, we can find the recipe dictionary associated with our key name in the main crafting dictionary. If our recipe has been defined, then we can separate our products and ingredient dictionaries into two separate variables instead of them being nested within our own recipe dictionary. This will just allow us to access them directly instead of having to go through the recipe dictionary each time we need to access them. Now, just remember and keep in mind that the products and ingredients are elements of our recipe dictionary and our recipe dictionary is the value of an element in our main crafting dictionary. Now, if that's confusing, feel free to ask any question you may have in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Okay, but then let's check to see if our player inventory has all the needed ingredients. Remember, the has all method checks for matching key names, so we must only pass through our key names as an array by using the keys method. But once we know that we have all the ingredients, we must check if we have enough of those ingredients. So to keep track of this, we can create an obtained ingredients variable and set it to zero. Then for each item in our ingredients dictionary, we can check if the amount of that item currently in our inventory is equal to or greater than the amount our recipe calls for. If true, then we can add a tally for our obtained ingredient. Once we've cycled through each ingredient, if the number of obtained ingredients is equal to the amount of ingredients in our recipe, then that means our inventory contains all the needed ingredients for our recipe. So for each ingredient defined in our recipe dictionary, we can update that item in our inventory by the amount needed by our recipe. And to remove that amount, we can make that a negative value. And again, for each product defined in our recipe dictionary, we can update our inventory with that item and the amount defined by our recipe. If we run the project, we can collect items, but now also craft items when we have the required materials within our player inventory. And that is pretty neat for the simplicity and short time we spent on it. Although this is just one example, there are countless examples of when dictionaries could come in handy. For example, we could take our example a bit farther like most games do and have an item database dictionary where you store data for each individual in-game item. For example, our campfire recipe could be stored within an item database under campfire along with the campfire's texture, description, and whatever else you may need. And of course, there are many other examples that don't include an inventory at all, like dialogue systems, quest systems, levels, terrain types, mapping objects, stats, properties, and so much more. But honestly, just use dictionaries and practice with them in any way you can, and as you gain a better understanding, you'll be able to use dictionaries in so many different ways as they are just that beneficial. But in some cases, enums may be the better option, but when? Well, first, I want to mention Skillshare. And yes, this video is sponsored by Skillshare, but I've been using Skillshare for almost a year now and they are wonderful. I mean, really, they are the largest online learning community with thousands of classes led by industry experts in practically every industry. So whatever it is you want to learn from game development topics to photography, healthy eating, or anything in between, Skillshare most likely has a top-notch class for you. I am currently taking a Notion Masterclass by Ali, and it is by far amazing. Also, Skillshare has this feature called Learning Paths, and if you're looking to master any specific skill, then this feature is perfect for you, as a learning path is simply just a consecutive class collection to help you walk through a specific skill. But yeah, Skillshare is great, and it's been a huge benefit to me, so I thought I should recommend it to you. And also, with a little added bonus, as the first 500 people to use my link in the description or pinned comment will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. So at no cost to you, join Skillshare and get started today and see exactly what I mean. So enums. Enums are a type of dictionary, but in simple terms, a dictionary that only stores constants. So for example, if you have related terms that need to be different constant values, then an enum is perfect. For example, if we wanted our player to have three different speeds, we could define those different speed values within an enum, then set our current speed to equal one of those values using the defined term. 
making those values far easier to remember and readable when deep in code. Now again, this is a simple example, but I hope it can help get the point across. Remember, we are using an enum here instead of a normal dictionary because the values of our different defined speeds will not change throughout the project as they are constants. You can also have an unnamed enum, which in this case would be the exact same as having three defined constants. Remember, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below and I'll be sure to help you out. But honestly, I think that is pretty much all the basics covered. So continue to practice with dictionaries, read the docs and ask questions and in no time you'll be making use of them all throughout your projects. Good luck and thank you for watching. I really hope this video was able to help you in some way, maybe just shine some light on the power of dictionaries. But until next time, stay safe and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. God bless and bye bye.